Solway to Discipuli et Discipuli, Vestimenta Romana, Pars Secunda, Miles Romanus. So in our previous uh, Vestimenta video, we talked about what people wear around the house and around town. And now we're going to talk about what the military would wear. The Romans were very famous for their military. Uh, that is how they conquered most of Europe, parts of the Middle East and North Africa. They were always on the move with their army. So we're going to learn about what kind of gear and clothing uh, they had. So to start with, the milites, the miles, also wore a tunica, just like everyone at home. Remember, that is the standard Roman article of dress, the tunica, like a short sleeve t-shirt that goes down to your knees. You put a kingulum around the waist. Now, you can't see the tunica or the uh, kingulum with that red tunica up at the top, but you can kind of see what a, a kingulum at the bottom looks like. Sometimes it's just a rope or a cord. Again, the kingulum makes the tunica act as two parts, look like two parts. That way, when you bend down, you don't get your knee caught in there. Now, the uh, Roman soldiers are usually going to wear a red tunica. Now, around the house, you're more likely to wear a white one if you're wealthy, a brown one if you're poor, but the Roman soldiers preferred the red one. This way, in war, if blood got on their tunica, um, it wouldn't be noticed. That way, you don't have to do your laundry as often. Now, we talked about at home, if you had cold or inclement weather, you would wear a pinula, which had a hood and kind of wrapped around your body. Well, that doesn't work for the soldiers because they need to have their arms free for their sword and shield. So instead, they would wear something more like the sagum or the lacerna. Uh, in the middle here, you see the sagum. Typically, it would only be pinned once instead of three times. That way, it kind of covers your shoulders to keep them warm but keeps your arms free. And the lacerna over to the right there was more often worn by sort of the generals, the people in charge. You can see it kind of hangs a little bit more fancy. He still has room for his uh, sword, um, but he can't carry a shield too well. So he's less likely to be on the front line. So those are kind of the main clothing items. So let's go ahead and talk about protective gear. Oh, footwear first, my bad, footwear. Uh, same footwear that you could wear around the house. You got the solei, where the heel and toes are uncovered. You got the calcae, which cover the heels and often not the toes, and the collie guy, which come up higher. Uh, you're going to find that soldiers prefer the calcae or the collie guy. Uh, it's not unheard of to see them wearing the solei. All right, so here's the protective gear. Uh, to protect your chest, you have this thing called a lorica. Uh, they're not always as full and fancy as the one you see here, but basically it is a uh, leather garment, so it's primarily leather. And then they sew strips of metal onto it. And so you can see there's these like little strips of metal that are sewn on and kind of work together to cover your shoulders and your chest. Sometimes they just kind of cover your chest, chest and your, uh, yeah, your heart, chest and your shoulders. Sometimes they come down further like this one. Now down at the bottom, you see protective gear for your head. That is the galia. Uh, they came in different shapes. Sometimes they came with feathers on top or horsehair on top. That would be a galia plumata. This is sort of a basic one here. Um, up in the middle top there, in their left hand, they would carry this big rectangular scutum. Uh, the scutum was big enough that it would protect half of your body and half of the body of the soldier next to you. That way, when the Romans marched into battle, each Roman soldier had one in their left arm. And so you had a wall of scuta protecting the Romans. And the last item over here on the right, not necessarily a protective device, but in the heat of war, sometimes you lose your line and you lose your group. If the Roman soldiers need to reform, um, one member of their group will hold up this signum and... All you got to do is look up, see where your signum is, where your group signum is, and then it shows you where to line up. So that way, if the battle gets a little bit too chaotic, you can get back together with your group. It's kind of like when we have that um, drill at school where we go outside and we go over to the church and we all have to line up by group. Remember, there's always people holding signs up with your unit or that says world language. That way it helps you find where to go. So if you've got a ton of people that can get lost, a signum can help you out. So the Lorica, 
protects your chest and shoulders. The gallia protects your head. The scutum protects the left half side of your body and the right hand side of the body of the soldier next to you. Let's go ahead and talk about the weaponry. The first weapon that you use is called the pilum. It's the big long thing. When you get close enough to the enemy, you throw your pilum. The idea with the pilum is it sticks in the enemy scutum and it makes the enemy scutum too heavy to carry. So the enemy has to drop their scutum. That's the whole goal is to get the pilum to stick in their scutum. Uh, not only does it get heavy, but now that they have this big long thing stuck out of it, uh, it kind of makes it so that they kind of like trip over it. So they have to drop their scutum and fight without protection. Now, once you throw your pilum, the next thing you want to do is pull out your gladius. And there you see the gladius down in the uh, lower right-hand corner. That is only about two feet long. It's not as long as the ones that you'd find in the Middle Ages. So after you throw your pilum and your enemy loses their scutum, you keep marching up with your line of scuta. You pull out your gladius, and the idea is simply to stab your opponent. Since they are no longer protected by their scutum, the goal is just to stab them. It's not really a good swinging weapon. It's better as a stabbing weapon. But as you can see, it's double-edged, and you could use it for swinging. Um, if you break or lose your gladius, you have a backup weapon, this little tiny thing here called a pugio. It's usually only six to nine inches long. That's sort of your backup emergency weapon. So you throw the pilum first, get rid of the enemy scutum, pull out your gladius, hoping for a quick stab, and then you use your pugio as the backup. Now, in the upper right, you see this diagonal strap that is known as a baltius. The baltius is there to hold your gladius for you because when you march into battle, you've got your scutum in your left hand, your pilum in your right hand, so you don't have room to hold your gladius. So once you throw your pilum, you grab your gladius out of your baltius, stab from that point. Now, if you look at the soldier in the upper left here, you can see that he's about to throw his pilum. You can see the gladius hanging off the baltium on his left. And kind of behind the scutum there, you can see the, the apugio, rather, just kind of ready to go if he needs it. So that's the backup plan. All right. So here's a picture of Emiles Romanus. Let's just kind of go through what he's got. Notice the red tunica on underneath. Goes down to his knees. Uh, he's got a kingulum wrapped around it. You can't see it because it's underneath. Protecting his chest and sh shoulders, you see the lorica. Diagonally across the lorica, you see the baltius. And off the baltius, you see his gladium hanging there. You see on his head, he's got a gallia to protect it. This one's a gallia plumata, so it's got that red horse hair on the top. Down on his feet, you can see he's got the calcae, so he's going to try to protect his heels and his toes are, you know, marginally protected. In one hand, you see his pilum, that's the throwing weapon. And in the other hand, you see he's resting his scutum on the ground. So that's going to protect himself and part of his neighbor. Now, I don't see a pugio in this particular picture, but it could be behind the scutum there. It may also be that he doesn't have one. So there is all of the protective gear, the weaponry, and the vestimenta of the Miles Romanus. Waleta discipulia discipuli.